Okay, let's dig a little more deeply into the structure of the program. And I want to have a conversation about blues. Blues is a central component of the Simply Music curriculum. Our students start learning their first blues pieces in their very first lessons. Uh, typically we start with a foundational piece and over the subsequent lessons, over just a period, a handful of weeks really, we elevate the, the richness and the sophistication and the complexity of the songs that our beginning students are playing. So whereas we might start with just a very basic sort of a foundational blues piece, just getting familiar with the structure of a 12 bar blues. It might just be that we're working around with the C, F, C, just taking that simple cycle and running it through the 12 bar blues structure. Within a lesson or two, we want to elevate that so we have a more sophisticated sounding piece. And we can do that by the addition of some really interesting chords. So it might be, become a little bit more comprehensive. And from there, we're going to develop that even further and start to fill out a melody line. So maybe within six, eight, ten lessons of being a total beginner, we'd have our students playing something that was more like so on and so forth. Now, from here, what we might be getting into is how do we develop some improvisational ability around blues? And what I want to do is essentially just give you a little bit of an insight into the value and the power and the application of looking for shapes and patterns. Let's say in this instance we've been working with the students, they've got a, 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 an existing foundation of the 12 bar blues. They are familiar with some more interesting chords. They've got a nice melody line that they've built out and they can play it together and it has a nice sounding piece. What if we wanted to start looking at some improvisation around the blues scale? Well, first of all, for now, we're not going to start by getting into the math or the theory. We always want to be looking at how does it unfold in, in, its, in a playing based application? How does it look on the keyboard? And one of the things that we uh, del delve into more deeply as we get deeper into the Simply Music curriculum is an area called mapping. And mapping is essentially, it's, it's, it's almost the ability to, to recreate in a diagram the, the picture that any series of notes creates when it's drawn as a, as a diagram. Sounds a little bit, bit weird, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a picture for you on a piece of paper. And I use this picture as a way of teaching students how to nail the blue scale in the key of C. It's quite simple. So in this instance, my map would just merely be like a mountain. And we have another mountain. And in the background, we have another mountain. So really, there's my map. We have two mountains in the front and a mountain in the background. Really powerful visual clue. Let's translate that to the keyboard and see what I'm talking about. I'm just going to identify the principal notes in the blue scale of C. Blue scale of C is these three notes, and it's these three notes. Doesn't matter where I'm playing them from. I could be playing them from a whole octave lower. It's these three notes, and these three notes. So really what we can see if we reference our diagram again, is that we have the mountain on the right and we have the mountain on the left. What's in the middle? Well, there's another mountain in the background and you know what? There it is right in the middle. It's just this little mountain here. So we have a mountain, a little mountain, and a mountain. I can work my way up the mountains or I can work my way down the mountains. Let's have a look and see how we might translate this into a blues improvisation experience for a beginning student. There are two components. We have to make some assumptions that the students are already in the lesson process. They're already learning songs. Our students are playing great sounding songs from their very first lessons. And so the, the familiarity with the left and the hand and right hand is working together comes together quite quickly and quite easily. 
The other thing is that the students already will have learned a couple of contemporary pieces, you know, a classical piece or two, some, uh, some accompaniment uh, pieces before they get into blues, and they've even learned some structural blues. So there's a lot that has taken place already, even though we're only six, eight, ten lessons into the learning process. It uh, happens very quickly with this program. Let's say we're looking at how we might add a blues improvisational experience. I'm going to move fairly quickly here now. All of you educators or those of you that have had musical background, you'll be right with me. Beginners, you might need to rewind the video a couple of times just to uh, capture what I'm doing, but I'm going to move relatively quickly. We're also cross-pollinating very commonly, what we call cross-pollinating. It's a learning strategy that's central to Simply Music. Cross-pollinating is taking something that you have learned, that you have consciously learned in one piece, and seeing how it can be adapted, modified, applied to the learning of another piece. So in other words, it reduces the amount of, of psychological learning or perceived learning that needs to occur. That's something that runs right throughout our program. For example, when we were demonstrating in a previous video, how we would teach Ode to Joy, I showed an example of a left hand that played and the lower note just moved down and up. In our blues, we would take that concept, we would apply it to the blues and say we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to move the top note up and down. Let's just have a look on the keyboard. Where, where with our blues piece, uh, with our Ode to Joy piece, we might have been here with this note going up and down. In the blues instance, we might be playing these two notes with the top note just going up and down. And we're just going to cycle that through, in this instance, on the key of C, F and G, which we also covered in one of our other videos. Let's have a look at how the left hand might work. And I'm going to move the left hand down a little lower, all the way down to here. So the left hand is just going to play with the thumb moving up and down. I'm going to move up to do the same on F playing the outside notes, and really it's just five fingers over five notes, if that helps you to position yourself. Another way could be, given that you know the chords through the accompaniment program, you just drop out the middle note. Either way, it's very easy for you to position yourself with these. You're just playing, I'm playing in cycles of four, or whether it's on G, one, two, three, four. There's an order to the way that this commonly unfolds in blues. It's called a 12 bar blues. I'm not going to get into that now. But essentially, in this instance, it's using this left hand with the, bottom, uh, with the top note of the left hand just moving up and down, alternating between C, doing that same thing on F, doing that same thing on G. With regards to the blues scale that we've talked about, I might just have you use two fingers, just your thumb and your third finger. Let's have a look on the keyboard. I'm going to put my thumb on C, and we said that we had this larger mountain, a little mountain, and a larger mountain. For each of the black notes, which are this one, this one, and this one, I'm going to use the third finger. So I'm going to play finger one, and I'm going to play this with finger three. See how my hand just folds over easily. Finger one comes down to here, finger three picks up the little mountain, and then onto the bigger mountain. And I can come up with finger three, my thumb comes under to this white note, onto the black note, the white note, the black note, and I can just work my way up. Starting on C, here's another blue scale, which will take us up to here. It's the big mountain, the little mountain, and the big mountain. And I can just do that all with fingers one and three. And so a combination of putting the left and the right hand together, maybe I might just be playing one note in my right hand for every one note in my left hand. basic, but it starts to get the hand familiar with the territory. We might double that up a little bit. There I went into triplets. Very, very simple to do once the body knows what to do. Only then do we focus on how to do it. One of the key distinctions in the strategic approach with this method is continually training oneself to, to think in terms of unseparating two areas which are commonly collapsed together. We always want to separate what to play from how to play. And in the early stages, we would never teach a ask a student to learn what to do at the same time as learning how to play it. 
So in the very early stages with this approach, we might just concentrate on the left hand. We might just be really clear about the shape, the mapping that we did to build the visual look of the blue scale. We would get familiar with using one and three as we were able to just move up and down through the blue scale, just a familiarity with that. And then of course when it comes to bringing both hands together, the, having both the left hand and the right hand fall consecutively, it only occurs as one single thought process for the brain. This is how we might go about using our shapes and patterns. And bear in mind, as I said earlier, the system that I've just shown you to identify the blue scale in the key of C, we have another amazingly simple system that allows us to identify the blues scale as well as our three blues structural chords in any key with just a simple little statement. It's fantastic. Great stuff to be learned here. Hope you enjoy it. Please share it.